Welcome to NumPy and Pandas Tips, Tricks, and Techniques, Section 3, our first section on pandas. And in this video, we're going to go through a quick pandas refresher. Okay, so first up, I'm going to import both NumPy and pandas. I'm importing NumPy so I can compare the NumPy array to a pandas data frame. And before we go too far, it's probably a pretty good idea to check your version. And so pretty much every package out there, you can check the version with this call to version the double underscores. Okay, so I'm using 0.24.2, a pretty recent version. I think there's one later version at this point. And if your version is less than, say, 0.21, it's probably a pretty good idea to upgrade it because pandas is a pretty dynamic library and they make changes all the time. And sometimes then things you're familiar with no longer work in a newer version, uh, but they add other convenience functions and, and other functionality that make upgrading a good idea. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do then is just make an umpire array filled with standard normal variates and take a look at that. All right, so we have a 10 rows, five columns here with the implied indexes starting at zero, one, and then down the rows again, zero, one. And then to convert it to a data frame, I'm just gonna pass it into the data frame class as is and then i'll call it okay so quickly the noticeable difference we get here is that the implied indexes are now explicit so we see integer based values for both columns and rows and then yes you can slice data out of the data frame using those indexes all right, a lot of times you're working with data that is a lot bigger than this 10 by five. And so you can call the head, all right, which will give you the first five rows by default. But if you want a different value, right, you can see the first two rows, all right, the first three, all right. And then there's a tail function that does the same thing, but at the bottom of the data frame. Okay, if you want to change column names, this happens quite a bit. You download data from someplace and the column names don't make any sense to you. And so you decide that you're gonna change the names. How do you do that? I am gonna set a variable here and rename my columns, uh, just these letter values, all right? Just to show you an example how to do this. And so you see what this does. Essentially, I end up with a list of letter values here, all right? And you are gonna to have to pass in a collection if you want to change column names, okay? But then to apply it to the data frame, I reference the data frame, call the columns property, and then I'll set it equal to calls. Okay, and just like that, we have a data frame with the columns renamed, all right? And if you're observant, you'll notice here that when I call a data frame, I'm not getting the whole thing. I'm getting the first three rows and the bottom three rows. And you can actually manage how many rows of data get shown to you using the pandas options. All right, and then display, and then max rows. All right, and you can set any integer value here that you want. All right, it's generally a good idea to do an even. All right, so four rows, six rows, whatever you like. All right, so this one, I'll set it at six. And then you essentially, when you call a variable, you limit how much data gets shown on the screen and uh, you see both the head and the tail. So that's kind of a nice side effect of using the display max rows option. All right, and then a lot of times we need to understand more about the data without visualizing all the data or without seeing it in table form in front of us. We can get information about the data frame conveniently with the info method. 
And what this does is it shows us each of the columns with their column names. It tells us what kind of data is there and it tells us how many observations are there. So if you're missing data, some of these values will not be 10. All right. And if you have text values in your data frame, probably you're going to see the data type as object here. Okay. Okay. If you're interested in changing the index, we saw how to change the column index. If you're interested in changing the row indexes, I'll set up a variable for that. And I'm going to use a built in data type in pandas. All right, it's the date range. All right, the date range is going to require us to tell it where we're starting. And then it's to tell it how many periods to go out from there. So I'll go out 10. So I match the size of my, the data frame that I'm working with here. And just so we can see what the data looks like, there it is. All right, and then to change the current integer base index to this index. I'm going to call the data frame and set index as index. So I don't get a copy of the data frame. I want it to happen to this data frame. I'm going to set in place equals true. All right. And again, we'll take a look at that. There it is. We have changed from integers to this sequence of dates. Okay, the other probably very common thing you want to do is just look at specific subsets of data. We can either look at columns or rows. Let's take a look at some columns here. So if I just want a single column, I call it like that. All right. And when you just get a single column or a single row, the return is a pandas series. So a data frame is actually a number of stacked up series. The uh, alternative syntax can also use in most cases, you can use the dot syntax and get the same result. Not in all cases. All right. Sometimes you will need to use the square bracket syntax. All right, and especially if you want more than one column returned, okay? So if I need more than one column, I'm going to have to use the double square bracket syntax, and then I can just pass in the column names that I want returned. And yeah, as soon as I get more than one column here, I'm going to get a data frame instead of a series returned. Now, subsetting rows, there's a number of ways to do this. The two most basic ways are with iloc and index location. And then I just pass in an integer value. All right. So if I get just one row again, I get a series. And then if I want more than one row, okay, I'm going to have to use that double square bracket syntax. And then I just set off the rows that I'm interested in by commas. Okay, if you're interested in a single value out of this data frame, then I can use syntax that's similar to NumPy slicing here. Okay, and I get a single value that lives in the first row, the fourth value there. Okay, and then, yeah, I can use the colon to get first row and the fourth value on. Okay, the other common way we use is with the loc method. Again, we use square brackets. And this is going to be instead of integer based, it's going to be value based. So if I have the first day in January 2019, I reference it that way. All right, and then with most values, as long as it's not a date, you can use that double square bracket syntax like I did with the iloc method, but for some reason you can't do that with dates. All right, so if you need dates, you need to get a continuous range like this. Okay, and then without the double square brackets. Okay, but what you can't do is just set off different dates with commas. That will also throw an error.
Okay, a lot of times we want to do something to our data based on a value there. So if I want to just find all the values that are, say, less than zero, Okay, I basically return a Boolean mask of where the values are less than zero. All right, so we can see that, okay, the first row, second value is less than zero. We return a true there. But maybe I want to actually see the value. So to do that, I'm going to save a variable, all right, as this Boolean mask, and then I'm going to pass it into the data frame. All right, and so now what we see is, okay, just the negative values. So wherever we have a false, we're not seeing a value show up. All right, so if we want to change the values based on something like, oh, if we want to say change all the negative values to zero, all right, I can do some math on them like that. And then when I call the data frame, I'll get something quite a bit different. All right, so I just see positive values now, and any place that was negative, we sort of set a floor there and said, okay, if it's negative, then we'll just call it zero. All right, data frame is pretty flexible. You can create data frames from lots of other structures. I'm going to go ahead and start making one using the data frame constructor here. And uh, I'm going to construct one from a dictionary. That's pretty common. And, and all I do is call data frame, and then I essentially pass in a dictionary. And I can pass in any collection I want. I can pass in a single string if I just have a data frame with one row, but then basically I have a series. All right, so let's put two columns in this. And all right, we're going to base it on the range method that comes built into Python. Okay, so there we go. Just like that, we have a new data frame. If I want to save it, I'm going to have to save it into a variable. Okay, and then if I want to add a column to this, I can just reference the data frame, and then I can reference a column that doesn't exist. All right, so if I just call this now, I'm going to get an error because, okay, C column doesn't exist, so I get key error. But if I set it equal to something, I can set it equal to even another column in the data frame, and, oh, okay, I can do some math on that first. Okay, and then when I call it, no problem. I get the C column, and it is based on the squared values of whatever's in B. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about in this refresher is getting descriptive statistics. All right, so all of the activities I've been talking about in this notebook are things that, okay, we'll use for background going forward. And much of what we do when dealing with data is getting an idea of what data is there without actually being able to see it. We summarize it somehow, all right? So that's what we're going to do with these descriptive statistics. So if I just take df2 and call describe on it, okay, I am going to get a table of descriptives for each of the variables in there. And then if I just want a single column, okay, I can limit it this way. Okay, once again, we get a series when I do that. And then it's a good idea in many settings to run describe on the whole data frame. It will only give you descriptives for numerical data, so if there's string values in there, it'll just skip over those columns, all right? But if I were doing the same thing in NumPy, I would actually end up with an error, all right? If there were any missing values or any values that, you know, it couldn't do math on, uh, you're going to end up with, with an error, okay? Pandas has built-in methods for handling both missing values and values where doing math doesn't make sense.